What was Chief thinking, only putting one recovery point on the back of the Jeep JL Wrangler? I don't know, but I've done some research and I found a company that offers a solution. They are called Maximus 3. They're based out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. And this product is fully made in the United States, which is great. Uh, the price is about $200. And what it gives you is an additional recovery point. And one extra thing that they give you is two closed loop recovery points as opposed to the open recovery point on the factory JL Wrangler. So let's go ahead and move forward with this install. These recovery loops do go on both the Rubicon with the steel bumper option and any other Wrangler with the plastic bumpers. Uh, there is some cutting involved if you do have a plastic bumper and I'm going to show you how to do that. As you can see, I've already started removing the driver's side bolts. It is a little snug getting the socket up in there, but you can do it with a stubby socket. It is a 21 millimeter. Okay, so we've removed the driver's side tow hook and we are going to move on to the passenger side. These two passenger bolts came out easily, but they are shorter than the driver's side bolts. There are four driver's side bolts. They are all the same length. And again, the two on the passenger side are shorter. So you may want to separate those and put those back when you install the tow hook. Um, Maximus 3 did include two bolts. Let's see if I can grab those for you. Right here. And you will slide this up inside the frame be like that but of course you can't see it and those bolts will drive up into there uh, all the bolts are torqued to 94 foot pounds and I'm going to use some blue Loctite just to have that extra assurance it does look like they had some form of Loctite in the factory hulls and also I'd like to make sure that I can remove the parts later in case there is some corrosion and that will help Back to the driver's side, we're going to use a piece of cardboard to make a template so I can try to replicate this shape on the passenger side. I just like things to look the same left and right. So what I've done here is I have created a template and it's going to allow me to recreate the cutout on the driver's side over on the passenger side. So the next thing I did was I took the template that I created using the driver's side cutout over there and I flipped it over to create a mirror image and I traced it. The next thing I'll do is I'll cut it out and I'll be able to install the tow loop. I used a routing bit and a sanding roll with my Dremel to Create the cutout on the passenger side. Sanding roll cleaned it up after I cut through. And then we'll install the nut cert. With the cutout that I made, I'm able to get the nut cert up at an angle like this. And then let it make the turn. It goes right in. I am adding a couple of drops of blue Loctite. Also make note that the factory bolts in the rear are 21 millimeter and the bolt head on the bolts supplied with the Maximus 3 tow loop kit are 22 millimeters. It's pretty self-explanatory, but these are the 21 millimeter bolts. I'll torque down to 94 foot pounds and these are the 22s. They are 94 foot pounds as well. Now on to the driver's side. Okay, so I've completed the installation of the rear tow loops and I want to show you how I decided to tighten these things down. So I started up here, snug them up, came over here, snug these up a little bit. I hit it on the back of the tow loop right here a few times to take out any slack. Obviously, if you're going to recover from the rear, you're going to be pulling it towards the rear. I just want to take out any possible movement if it got yanked on pretty good. So it's already going to be at the end of its range of motion. Makes sense to me. Maybe it'll make sense to you too. So then I came back and I torqued 
those two bolts down there and then those uh, I want to point out one more thing over here you can get the light on it all right so you can see the high points there I had to take some 600 grit sandpaper uh, my three quarter inch pins for my shackles would not slide through there so I took some sandpaper rolled it up uh, and there was an in and out motion and I rotated it. Uh, it seemed a good combination there. That was effective. And I did that over and over again until I got the pin to slide all the way through freely. Um, one pin I had to sand on it as well. The other pin was fine. It, it slid in. I think it had a little more powder coating on it. So I think that's what is going on here. I think there's some powder coating uh, that, uh, you know, it's, it's got a little excess there and you may need to sand it just wanted to give you a heads up because who wants to be out on the trail beating the hell out of uh, your pins to get them in and out not me so anyway i hope you enjoyed the install video i may have some things in the future you take care and uh, thanks for watching okay so for a quick update Back in December of 2020, I installed these Maximus 3 recovery points. They've been exposed to road salt. Not much. We're here in northern Kentucky, but I'd say probably about two to three weeks of salty road conditions. They've been exposed to road grime, mud, rocks kicking up. Let's crawl under there and see what condition they're in. I don't see really any flaking or anything. I've not had to touch this one up. I did have to sand the pinhole a little bit, but other than that, this side's good. Okay, so we can see in those 10 months time, there is some corrosion. There is some flaking of the powder coating coming off. Um, you can even see a spot right here. Oh, look at that. That's new. All right. Initially, I had a red set. And when I went to torque them down to 94 foot-pounds, uh, the powder coating on those cracked and lifted up. And they sent me a new set to their credit. I did spray paint these with a clear enamel to slow the corrosion down. This right here is new. <laughs> so... I'm probably going to break out some black enamel after I flake off all of this powder coating because if you don't, it will just hold moisture under there. Would I buy these again? Yes, I would. Uh, I would just get them bare steel if they would let that happen. If I called them and say, hey, can I have a set in bare steel? I would rather do that and just spray paint them with a black enamel. That way later I could just buy cheap paint and touch them up because uh, on the other side, I did hit, you know, going off road in a, in a pretty steep ditch. I did hit these and they did actually save my plastic bumper. So yes, I would buy them again. Uh, I would just rather them not be powder coated. So hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, maybe you learned a little bit of something. If you like the video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel. If you have a question, please comment, or if you want to give a tip of your own, uh, leave that in the comments for me, and we'll see you next time.